<laughs> Good morning. <laughs> Once again. <laughs> it's a few minutes late. I actually wasn't playing. I mean, I was playing my guitar, but that's not why I'm late. I was testing something, testing the Chakra Workshop for you guys so I can mail it off. We've got our first person ordering the audio recorded version of this Chakra Workshop. I'm so excited. So excited. Good morning. Good morning. Uh, let's see. It's 10.01. And uh, where are we at? Let me get out my handy dandy little notebook. <laughs> How are you guys? How was your day yesterday? <sighs> I'm here. Good morning, Shauna. I sent you a test file, Shauna. Let me know how that works. <laughs> um, yeah, so uh, we got the Chakra Workshop all done, all ready. Does she ever gently weep? You know what? She does when um, it's not so gentle, though. When I uh, strum a chord really hard. Whew. So I have to show you guys this because it's funny. I have to protect all of my cables with this stuff. This, this gigantic cording in order to keep my rabbit from consuming them because this is what she does. This is, this is what she does. She's a lovely animal, but like this should have a, a jack on the end of it. A male headphone, 3.5 millimeter jack. It does not. It does not because she's a rabbit. <laughs> She's a rodent, and she's obsessed with chewing on cords. So that's something I've been doing lately, is covering all of our cables and cords. I had to buy a whole new head, headphone set. She also got, oh, I already threw it away, another headphone cable for a really expensive pair of headphones that I use. Rabbit. She's so lucky, she's so freaking cute. Okay, so let's see. Announcements. Because it's happening this weekend, we've got the Eugene Fair. You can see the flyer on our group. I wanted to say something also about the group. Many of you guys are already in there, but if you're not in there yet, join the Facebook group that we have for Healing Pathwalkers. Um, it is full of just some of the most amazing people, like so many of you guys. And um, and there's it's growing every day. It's a beautiful environment. We have all kinds of awesome stuff. I would love to pull one for you, Andrea. Any other requests for card pulls, just let me know. If I missed one, write it again because I'm not going to scroll back right now. Um, so, <clears throat> and on the website. What's on the website, Shauna? Oh, yes, and you can view the, <laughs> the flyer on the website as well. <laughs> I'm, I'm all together this morning. Um, so yes, on the website you can view the flyer. It's all right there. It's so easy to find. You just go to the website and click on events. I did miss one. Who did I miss? Oh, and Shauna. Shauna, Andrea, and Jesse. Sounds good. Good morning, Kristen. Um, I think we just got everybody. <laughs> I know, right? <laughs> I think we just got everybody for today, but Kristen, I would love to put you down for tomorrow if you're interested. Um, yeah, so the other thing, you guys, I mentioned this yesterday that I'm going to start doing a different way of kind of interacting and interfacing with people in the Pacific Northwest. So um, I think what I'll also do is, like, if I'm going to be traveling somewhere, I'll post one of these Dine with Jessies for when I'm going to be in that area. Um, and so, you know, you never know. It might just pop up out of the blue. Um, but what I... Okay, perfect. Thanks, Sue. Uh, but what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be doing breakfast with Jesse, lunch with Jesse, or dinners with Jesse. And all right, I got you down, Kristen. And so those will be basically a two hour slot of a meal with me. It, it, you know, um, so many people request to just be able to spend time with me in my life and in my day. And what is it like to go out and to interact in this completely transparent and engaging way? Um, and, and, so many people want to just get time to just pick my brain, not necessarily get a reading or a session. Hi, Chris. Um, but just to be able to kind of, you know, talk to me and uh, interact with me face-to-face. -face. So 
Thank you. Uh, thanks, Jesse. Um, so I thought, why not? Like, if I'm not going to do the galleries anymore, and I was really only making a little bit at the galleries anyway, because most of the people who were attending the galleries really couldn't, and psychic fairs, they're looking for ways to interact at a, um, as, as inexpensive of a way as possible, which is, I totally understand. And that's actually why I do Morning Oasis. I do this so that there's a free way for you to be able to access whatever it is that you are looking for with me. Um, there's a free way of interfacing with me. Of course, it's on my terms because it's my show. Uh, so I thought, why not just do a, do a meal? You know, let's sit and sup and eat and laugh and talk and chat and I wanted to keep them really small and intimate so there'll be no more than three tickets available so then we would never having to do more than a four-person table and then I don't really have to like pre-arrange it with the restaurants and I'll just take you out to my favorite restaurants for various meals so the first one's going to be I've got it up on my screen May 7th um, and it's from 10 a.m. Oh, I have it here 11, but it's actually from 10 to noon. I'll have to edit that. Let me make a note. Edit. On the website, it's so, um, on the website, it's under events, Breakfast with Jesse, Saturday, May 7th, 10 to, two, to 12 at Jam on Hawthorne. If you haven't been to Jam on Hawthorne, it's awesome. It is so yummy. It's the best food, honestly. It's like they have a full, huge breakfast menu. They have a full, huge lunch menu. They do cocktails. They have co espresso drinks. They have regular coffee. They've got so many different things there. They have everything. Glute they have gluten-free stuff. They have... Um, vegan stuff they have like a vegan sausage that my friend Josh always gets even though he's not vegan he likes it that much um, so there's all kinds of stuff there so yeah it'll be um, three people joining me at a table and then you guys can decide like if you have a couple friends who you want to be all like let's do it together buy your tickets all together as a group you can buy them on the website that's the only place to buy them is through the website um, and the Facebook event that's on our Healing Pathwalker page links to the website also. So that's where you get them. Or you can also plan ahead. And in June, Friday, June 2nd, it's always going to be the first Friday, Saturday, or Sunday of the month, whichever one of those days I choose. Uh, so in June, it's June 2nd, Friday night, and it's dinner with Jesse. So we're going to go to my favorite Thai restaurant, which is Isan Thai Cuisine. They're so yummy. So yummy. And of course, it's Thai. So there's all kinds of gluten-free and vegetarian and vegan options. I mean, everything is there. So, um, so yeah, your ticket's $20. I will cover the cost of your first beverage. I'm not going to pay for alcoholic beverages, but tea or coffee or drink or juice, like that kind of stuff. I'm t I, I want to get that for you guys. So um, that's how that works. That's what that deal is. And we talk about whatever you guys want to talk about. And you get two hours of, of, of me and, and my energy and in my favorite places. And, and I think it's I think it'll be really fun personally uh so yeah that's that's the deal those that's a new event that's coming up and it's going to be a monthly event and i am thinking about um really trying to make it more of a practice to do meditations like the nighttime meditations so let me know if you're interested in that again this is interest driven i want to be able to do things that you guys find engaging and interesting you know that you guys want how you guys want to interact with me um <clears throat> so Figure that out. for, And so also, uh, because there's only three spots available, if you purchase your ticket and it's already been booked up, because I'm not sure how to make it so that Facebook says no more or PayPal says no more, it's full, then I will re give you the option of either refunding your ticket or if there's enough interest and there's enough people, I might add one extra day of doing it. We'll just, we'll just kind of play it by ear and see how it goes. Um, but it'll always be on the weekend, Friday, Saturday, or Sunday. Okay, so 
That sounds awesome, Jesse. <laughs> well, you know I'm going to be there eventually. Um, so, yeah. And if I am traveling in different areas um, and I have the time, like, because sometimes travel schedules are crazy. Sometimes I'm traveling with my husband and my son. So, obviously, then those days I wouldn't be. Perfect, Teresa. That sounds awesome. Um, so, that's that's... That's the announcement. Is that all the announcements, Shauna? <laughs> Shauna's running a special right now. If you haven't worked with Shauna, she does amazing work. Like, amazing work. And that's awesome. You guys, if you haven't, if you haven't en engaged with Jesse on a direct level, he's hilarious, funny, wonderful, interesting, talented, great guy. Um, so many of you guys are just amazing people. I'm blessed with such a beautiful and brilliant community truly okay so I think that's I think that's all the oh the metaphysical fair is this Saturday in Eugene at the Unity Church um, from 1 to 9 p.m. so there's that as well okay I think that's everything I think I got everything covered with the announcements um, yeah so we'll go into card polls <clears throat> and how did you guys feel as a result well Chris I can't sign you up. You have to go to the website. You have to go to the events page and click on, there's a purchase. You can purchase it directly from the website. You can choose one ticket, two tickets, or three tickets. So um, that's the way to get the tickets. Uh, I, I, I'm trying to make it as autopilot as possible. <laughs> See, Laura, Claire, Shauna, we've all we've all hit up the Jesse. <laughs> he is wonderful, wonderful guy, and building up such beautiful community with each other. One of the things that I'm loving to witness with you guys is how much you guys are building community with each other. How much you're bringing in the people that you love and trust and enjoy, and bringing them into this community, creating it even stronger, more beautiful. It's it's a truly beautiful experience working with you guys okay um shauna oh shauna the goddesses the goddesses want to talk to you those beautiful goddesses oh yeah so this morning i'm gonna just rant for a second just a quick second it's gonna take a second while i get the cards ready so i posted this morning a video and i posted it with my comment is boom okay and it was a woman completely naked talking about how in our culture at large, in our social media culture especially, and on Facebook in particular and Instagram, how we allow and we allow them to allow people to post videos of violence, right? Videos of people literally being murdered, literally being killed and murdered on, on our feeds and um, sorry, Teresa, today got booked up, but I'd be happy to put you down tomorrow. We allow that to be put on, on our social media. Not only do we allow it, but we support it, actually. Uh, and as a result of that, we had somebody, I don't know if you guys heard about this, but there was a guy, if you, like, I guess last week, who did one of these live feeds while he went around looking for somebody to murder. He pulled up and shot somebody in the face because he was mad at his girlfriend. And now they can't find him. They, they don't even know where he is, okay? I get friend requests because my name is spelt like a boy's name. They don't even look beyond that because I don't have an I in my name, so it's not Jessica because it's spelt like a Jesse boy. I get friend requests all the time for, well, you know, Elizabeth, I, I think that's a good thing. That's a good thing. From women who are dressed literally like prostitutes or like strippers, wearing thongs, wearing virtually nothing at all, and they're asking to be my friend because they want to have a good time with me, right? That's clearly sexual exploitation of themselves and seeking others right so it it's completely it's whoring on Facebook 
And I'm sure there are guys doing it too. I get friend requests from guys who try to get me to, you know, fall in love with them. Obviously trying to get my money or trying to, whatever, access somebody who's a vulnerable person. So I get all these these things all the time on Facebook and there's no problem with that. They don't take those women down. They don't take their stuff down. But this lady who's just standing there naked talking, they take they took it down. And not only did they take it down from my page, they made me go through my own all of my pictures and agree that I didn't have any other inappropriate, socially unacceptable by Facebook standards imagery on my profiles. So what the bleep, okay? What the bleep? I was very annoyed by that this morning. So I just had to say that. <laughs> All right. Oh, Shauna, talk about perfect alignment of cards. Yeah, exactly. They're prostitutes. And you know what? That's the oldest profession. And if somebody is so desperate that they are willing to pay for it, they're literally willing to pay for what just about anybody can get, right? All you have to do is behave like a human being and someone will sleep with you. But they're willing to pay for it. Why? Because they want to be able to treat somebody however the fuck they want. And if somebody else is willing to do that and pay for that and be paid for that, I have no I have no qualms with that. I don't care. Honestly, I don't care. It's fine. Whatever. But to say that it's that just a woman naked standing there is so indecent and so inappropriate that they take it down and now I have to validate all the rest of my stuff, that's some bullshit. And if somebody did post flag my video, they shouldn't be following me because that shows that they have no idea who they're following because I have no problem with nudity. I have no problem with any of that. I have some problems with like violence. I have problems. I have problems personally. You will never see me post a video where somebody is dying. Okay. <laughs> You'll never see that. You won't see me posting a lot of political stuff either, especially not when it's oriented to all of that kind of horrible things. I might watch some of it if somebody else has posted it. And I feel like, um, what I do when I watch that stuff, by the way, is I, I, I connect into that person who's dying and I make sure that they've got some angels that are there. I make sure their soul's not trapped where they're at. I make sure that the energies that are, are being drawn to that. Because let me tell you, when you watch something like that as an energy worker, when I watch it, I can feel all the feed, all the feeding off the fear, feeding off the anger, feeding off of the death. I feel all of that stuff. So what I do, if I feel guided to watch it, I'm working on all that. I'm creating boundaries around it. I'm working on the people who may be watching it in the sense that I try to create a space where if they have the conscious thought, oh, I hope I don't get anything from watching this, then that they can access my work. But that's what I watch that stuff for. And usually I just put comment based on the titles um, because... I agree we need to know that this stuff is happening. We need to know that police are just at points killing other people. And we need to know that people are killing police, okay? This is not a one-way street. Police are not bad guys. They're humans. They're humans in a uniform, in a, in a costume, okay? That's all they are. They're not evil. They're not bad. They're not horrible. They don't go out in general with the idea that, oh, I'm going to go kill somebody today. But there are people that do, right? And I'm sure there are some cops. Let's be real. They're humans too. They're all people. They're the spectrum. So, okay, rant officially over. I'm done. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Thank you, Jesse. Yes, I'm done. Ah, Shauna, you got Amara Omni. We've gotten her before. She's for self-healing. She's the number one card in the goddess stack. She's one of my favorites. I'm going to just like put it really close up so you can kind of see all the amazing symbolism. First of all, there's Merkabas in each corner, right? Really activating that personal self energy. See how there's a planet with all these crystals coming up out of it? It did need saying, Shauna. So there's all these crystals coming up out of that planet. Now, I have worked with several different people 
who are in the process of kind of awakening to themselves. And they go on their first meditation with me where we ask to project and we travel and we go to where their soul is calling them. And when I go there with them, I have had several talk about a crystalline world like this, where everything is crystal. And it's all these crystal structures. So this is something in our consciousness, right? Mm -hmm. That's going back deep. So she's in the waters, but she's also half out of the waters, and she's reaching, right? There's so much going on in this imagery. There's butterflies. I don't know if you can see them. Little butterflies of change and transition. We've got our sun. Our sun is a planet, is a a solar body that has a consciousness just like our planet has a consciousness, Gaia. When you connect to source, when you connect to God, this is the consciousness you're connecting into, a sun consciousness. So really using this, using your life force and your energy and tapping into the world, your history, the waters were created from water, you know, all of these different things connecting in to come together to heal. So it's like everything's coming into alignment for you. Bye, Sue. Um, coming in togetherness to oneness for you. It's beautiful, beautiful. And Shauna is in the middle of some intensely deep healing. Some of the kind of healing that we sometimes, we don't even like really expect to be able to have because it's just that intense and that powerful. And I can't wait to see what happens as she comes out the other side of it because for me, it's been amazing. We, I, she, she and I are always so aligned. I did it. Now she's doing it. It's like one or the other <laughs> hitting on it. So you are being supported by this um, um, Amara Omni with your healing. That's beautiful. Okay, let's see. Who's next? Andrea. And the goddesses want to talk to you too, Andrea. I have a feeling about today. It might just be a goddess kind of day. Calling in that divine feminine to realign women with what we're here for. What we're here to do. Own our power in a real way. I won't rant, I promise. Though I want to. I have things to say. <laughs> uh, so, <clears throat> Andrea, when we get this card... It's interesting. So you got the negation card. It's a confirmation card. It's really time to look at the different ways. It means that the last card that we got is also applicable to you. But how are you blocking it from yourself? How are you blocking your own self-healing in whatever way? How are you spilling out those bits that are there, especially for you, to heal with? And as we know, we're a collective, so this is for all of us. How are you blocking your own self-healing? How are you letting her in? How are you not letting her in? How are you feeling in your waters? You know, what ways do you create situations that prevent this healing energy of Amara um, Omni to come through and to support you in your own development and growth and healing? So it's really about looking at how do you block that? You know, there's the moon in the, in the window. So oftentimes we block it by paying more attention to the reflection, right? To seeing, oh, it's out there. It's this out there. It's that out there. Or we waste our energies, right? We spill out our waters, our wine. We make messes of our lives. And then we kind of view it as somebody else's problem, so in what ways are, is that still happening for you? And this is for all of us, right? All right, so Jesse, yeah, goddesses also. I had a feeling. <laughs> and she's back. I told you, you guys, this, this one is like here. She's, she's like here right now. And she's also, by the way, the very last card in the goddess deck. So we've got the first one and the last one. This is White Buffalo Woman. Again, unity. Recognizing, first of all, your unity with everything and everyone. One of the aspects of healing that it's led me to personally, why I believe so strongly in and teach from the concept of the law of one, is because as you heal yourself, 
Well, one, you realize everything you hate and despise that you see outside of yourself, it's actually in you too. It's a part of you too. And the question is, can you love you while you have that as a part of you? And so then it becomes usually, no. <laughs> usually we struggle with self-love, but we can accept and love things in others. Or we accept them in ourselves and pretend they're not there and despise them in others. So it's recognizing the unity, seeing the truth that all things are true about all of us. There are points where you're going to be the liar. There are points where you're going to be the one lied to. There are points where you're going to be the abusive one. There are points where you're going to be the one being abused. You will be the victim. You will be the victimizer. You will be the aggressor and you will be the one aggressed against, right? The truth is we are all things in every situation. It's just what context, how do we view ourselves? How do we allow for that to be true? And how do we reject our, from ourselves that this is also true? So we usually judge others for these things most harshly that we refuse to accept to be true about ourselves. And coming into wholeness, into unity with the self, into whole self means accepting that I am all things at all points in all points of time, right? All things. So White Buffalo Woman and Omnimundi is with us. Is that right? Her name I never get right. Amara Omni. Amara Omni. Amara Omni and White Buffalo Woman are with us today. I, that rant is still in my head, you guys. I'm sorry. I'm going to try to move forward. And that would be me really not accepting some aspect, right? <laughs> what am I not accepting, guys? <laughs> Help me out. Let's be a collective. Help me see what parts am I rejecting by being angry with those Facebook people that keep us in fear. Am I rejecting fear? What do you guys think? I'm curious. You guys have been following my work for long enough. You see? I'm not perfect. <laughs> I'm in my own process, my own progress. So we're talking about passion, which I just expressed some passion too, right? Like passion comes in all forms. It doesn't have to be necessarily awesome feeling and wonderful and beautiful and blah, blah, blah. Passion can be all sorts of things. But what do you reject Facebook post-wise? I Facebook post-wise, I don't, I, I don't pre-post certain things, but am I rejecting them? Uh, Chris, no, you. I can put your card, your name down for a card tomorrow. The slots filled up really quickly. They fill up fast, so you guys have to ask for them tomorrow. And, and now tomorrow is already full. We've got Kristen, um, Teresa, and Chris now for tomorrow. So political. The part about the political is it's like an opinion festival. <laughs> and I kind of feel like um, it's like gossip. Really, um, politics are, are situational and they're entirely based upon a personal belief system. So, um, and I don't think that we're as divided as politics makes us believe that we are. I have a lot of political, I love having political discussions one-on-one. -on -one. Uh, the thing I don't like about the political posts on Facebook is you can't, you, it's out of context. You can't have the full discussion. Um, and nobody wants to read a big long blurb, which I know I do. I'm guilty of. Uh, so I love to have the political discussions as a discussion in order to be able to both receive from the other person truly and hear what they have to say and feel what they're feeling as well as to express my own personal belief and feeling. But I don't think that any of us actually know what's going on in the political arena because we're so far removed from it. There's so much that's hidden from us. And I think that politics are basically a tool that's used to control, to divide, and to um, oppress people personally. Uh, so I think that I personally would love to see us get to something more like what we started as, where politics are really small 
Um, you know, our political systems are designed purely to represent the, the smaller body of people that are more local. Uh, I think that the president is, should be a much less powerful position. Uh, it used to be that we had, um, you know, our senators and our government, the Senate um, and the House, they would only meet for three months. And it would be the winter months while they weren't working. They weren't paid for this work. And they came in to do this work just for that period of time when their businesses were slower. And this is true of almost all businesses, even as a, as a personal business owner. Everything except for retail gets really slow during the winter time, and and then after Christmas, it's dead. <laughs> Nobody has any money left. Everybody's just trying to get through the winter. <laughs> so um, that was why they had it that way. That's why they had the session set up that way. Now we have career politicians who make their money on it, uh, and they they are creating laws that we really don't need anymore. We don't need all these laws. In fact, what we need is far less laws. We need less laws and more social social training. You asked. <laughs> Passions. It's my bad. I'm actually a very politically active person in education about politics. And, you know, I've done a lot of political stuff as a, as a younger woman. Um, it's just been in my adult life that I've kind of transitioned away from it. So political posts, I, I think a lot of people talk about stuff and they really don't know what they're talking about. Uh, and so um, that's why I avoid them. Okay, enough said. <coughs> so now you just got to see some of Jesse's passions. When I was younger, I wanted to be president, actually. I, um, <laughs> I actually, I, I would say things like, um, don't take my picture doing this because I'm going to be president someday. <laughs> and so I, I had that strongly in my head. I went to a leadership camp, you know, I, um, a mock government camp in high school. Uh, I've, um, <laughs> I've, I've done some volunteering on different campaigns for some local uh, governing bodies. So I'm, I, I have a sort of political bent, but at the same time, I think that it's bullshit. So, you know, what do you do? Um, passions. So I originally decided to do passions as a focus this week because somebody asked me that they don't feel passionate about anything. <laughs> uh, and I'm not old enough yet, Chris. Believe it or not, I'm not old enough yet. <laughs> you got to be 45. So um, I'm working towards it. <laughs> uh, so uh, let's see. I think people may be in the idea of people looking and judging one another without knowing the person, dehumanizing perhaps. Exactly, Laura. We tend to look at the position and we tend to look at um, things that are beyond their control and view and then make judgments about the person as an individual. We do that with police officers. We do that with priests. We do that with all kinds of different professions where people put on a cloak, uh, a cloak that, that, that designates them as a, a role. And we forget that they're people, that they're human beings. Well, see, that's the problem, Shauna. I don't think the president can fix it all. I think that the president is kind of like um, a figurehead, honestly. I, I, I'm I, finding it interesting, if anything else, you know, Donald Trump, what he is showing is the, the uh, if the president didn't give a rip about what anybody thought, that he, this is the level of things he could do with that office, the level of power they, that the office could have. Uh, so that's interesting. But at the same time, he's not really making any change other than bombing more places. But I'm going to put out there, too, Obama bombed a lot of places. Obama bombed a lot of places. Bush bombed a lot of places. Clinton bombed a lot of places. There are no such thing as good presidents, okay? They're all part of a system. They're all part of part of this other kind of governmental body, right? So, um, yeah, so <laughs> that's, that's the part of me that's like, eh, why? There was a movie that came out a few years back called Idiocracy. <laughs> Maybe passion isn't what we're going to be talking about. Maybe politics is, but politics are passionate. Um, there was a movie that came out a few years back called Idiocracy, and it had Luke Wilson. Or was it Owen? No, I think it was Luke. Luke Wilson. 
Yeah, exactly. And it was the whole premise of the movie was that they took two people, a man and a woman, who were absolutely average in every way. Average intelligence, average drive. There was nothing outstanding or really low. They were right in the middle. And they had no, nobody gave a rip about them. They had no family. They had no friends. They didn't engage with other people. So they found a woman off the streets and they found a man who was in the military who worked in the, as a clerk in the, in the records room and that he had no ambition whatsoever. <laughs> uh, so that's funny, Jesse. So he, so they took these two people and they put them in a time capsule and uh, cryogenics chamber and froze them. And the intention of the program, they were used as a test subjects, but the intention of the program was to be able to freeze our greatest minds, our greatest. Oh, she was a prostitute. I couldn't remember if she was or not. <laughs> to freeze our greatest minds, our greatest heroes and save them for when we actually needed them, right? That was the premise of their experiment. But they lost their funding, they forgot all about the people in the capsules, and uh, 500 years goes by, I think it's 500, 300 or 500, I can't remember. It's been a while since I saw it. Uh, and they, um, and then as the building's being demolished, their capsule breaks open, they wake up, and they come into this world where suddenly, first of all, they can't understand anybody because nobody enunciates anymore. Nobody speaks like clearly anymore, right? They're all just enunciating. They all sound the same. Uh, everybody, nobody drinks water anymore. Water is considered toilet water. That's something for the toilet. You don't drink that. Everything is sold to you. Everything is a commodity. So everybody drinks Gatorade or something like that. <laughs> they even water their plants with Gatorade, which causes them to have a complete famine because, you know, plants don't need Gatorade. But farmers would then have to buy it because the, I, they're so manipulated and controlled by the media. And TV... TV is just this tiny little square in the center, and all the way around is banner after banner of advertisements. Advertisements and leading news quotes, leading news tickers. Okay, so um, it's, it's true. And their president, by the way, their whole political arena has turned into a WWF arena, and their their president is a wrestler, and he's completely an idiot, and he all he does is make self-aggrandizing statements, and and it's called Idiocracy. The movie is called Idiocracy. I remember when I watched it, this was like, I think I, it must have come out. My son was young. It was like two or three. Um, Jesse, can you write the name of the movie so it's written there? Thank you. Uh, so it is, so it came out, yeah, like in the early 2000s. And I remember watching it and I was like, oh my God. Somebody made a movie about my personal view of where we're headed as a culture. And it was hilarious. And another thing that they did was, they took two sets of couples. Uh, <laughs> exactly. They took two sets of couples. One couple was um, a highly educated, uh, very intentionally focused couple. They were just, they made choices. We're not going to have kids until we have a good house and have good money and we can support and take care of them and be a, a good parents for them. And then there was like, then the other couple was like Bobby Sue and Mary Jane, right? And they started having babies when they're like 14 or 15. And so they showed them, right? And so like they checked back in throughout the movie to these two different couples and the, and I'm kind of guilty of this, but <laughs> the, the well-educated couple that could actually probably raise contributing members to the culture that, that would, that would be relatively less damaged, hopefully by their growing up. Uh, they waited so long, they never had any kids, but the couple that had, didn't give a rip, they just had kids because they were too lazy to even care about birth control. And really, in, and one of the things that's not actually true, I, I don't think that's entirely true about the more, um, the poor culture that has children. I think it's called the generational poverty. It's more about that they have children because that is wealth, right? That is, that is something that they can do. They can have, um, and, and also they can't afford birth control. They can't, it's, they're not educated around, uh, those kinds of, um, 
what that is. And if you look in other cultures where like the poorest people have the most children in general, it, it's because they're working the farms, they're working in the fields, they use them as a resource. You know, it's, it's a completely different way of looking at things. So, you know, but the, the movie, the commentary of the movie is, so here's these people who, who potentially, and this is also part of our social programming, could have created uh, contributing individuals to our culture versus these people who are just creating more rednecks and drunks and ignorant people have like a billion kids and now they have a billion grandkids and now they have 10 billion great grandkids all before this couple realizes, oh my God, we're infertile now. We can't even have children. So it's just making commentary about these different aspects. Now that said, you know, <laughs> It was a perfect commentary of, of what we're talking about today. So that was that. I, I really should be done ranting because now it's time for our meditation and I could still keep going. <laughs> ah! Right, exactly. Carl's Jr. That's <laughs> I'm not at all surprised that you've seen that movie, Jesse. Now, one of the things actually, this is what I'm going to talk about next. I want to talk about how can we, since since we brought this up, and since we're talking about passions, and since we're talking, mostly we're talking about what I'm passionate about, <laughs> but hey, it's my show, right? Uh, so uh, let's talk a little bit about how can we, as a conscious and aware population, approach all of these kinds of subjects that we've been discussing today and do something about them? What can we do about them? What is there to be done about them? And what is there to be accepted and allowed? Because because, because people are people and we're on a spectrum and we're growing and we're evolving and this is <laughs> where we're at. And if we take away the symptoms, how can anyone know where to direct the healing energy for themselves? So that's kind of, that's kind of where I think we're going to go today. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, there's a lot to talk about on that. I probably could make like a dozen shows on this subject, but we'll, we'll, we'll minimize it. Maybe that's a breakfast conversation. <laughs> okay, so um, let's see. So I have a feeling. Um, let me just feel this for one second before I make this, this, this decision. You do have to see that movie, Shauna. I would loan it to you, <laughs> but I loaned it out and it never came back. I bought that movie. When I saw that movie, I was like, I am buying that movie. That was the most amazing movie. Ah. So, you know, Jesse, we do. And that's the hard thing. That's the hard part is that we have to allow. We have to allow this the chaos, we have to allow the ignorance, right? These are judgmental words, by the way. We have to allow these things to happen because they're part of what creates discomfort and forces people to shift and change if they're capable of it. So we also have to allow those that are not capable of it to be serving in that role as a motivator, right? As a, a catalyst maker, Pain is a part of our growth and experience. Suffering is a part of this system of polarity because it is the opposite of pleasure and joy and absolute serenity, right? The opposite of that is, is, is total fighting, lack of joy, right? Suffering. So as long as we live in a polarized system, we have to allow that stuff to be there. Exactly, Jesse. <laughs> so then it becomes, can we allow that to be going on? Can we take from it everything there is for us to learn and take from it? As you can see, I still have engagement in some of these things. So I'm still on the spectrum. I'm still working this is these issues. I'm still trying to allow for women to be whoring themselves on Facebook and it not and that to be okay. But a woman talking about how we allow violence to not be okay, right? These are things that we all as individuals have to find our balance with. And passion, you know, how does passion tie into it? 
passion is where our focus is engaging us. Passion is like, I believe, passion is where it, it's, it's like that big spotlight of our attention and focus is directed because that's where we're going to find our healing. That's where we're going to find our own personal blockages. That's where we're going to find those things with which keep us and prevent us from feeling empowered, feeling whole, feeling in connection with each other, feeling like, yeah, you know what? That woman who literally prostitutes herself on Facebook is me in some way, right? I'm up here on Facebook. I put myself out there. I show all of who I am, not physically, but energetically and emotionally. And can I not judge her for her behavior when I'm here doing something similar, just in a different construct of circumstances? Passion, emotion versus reason and logic. Yeah, we're still human, part of the balance work. Right, exactly. So <clears throat> this is such a challenge for so many of us, and it's why we as individuals struggle so much in this, in this system. And we're, and we're going to find these challenges showing up for us all along the way. And it's going to continue until we literally are one collective consciousness. Literally all together as a collective consciousness. So any ways in which we find ourselves pulled apart, and usually it's through our passion that that's the motivator, right? The driver that pulls, we're going to find those things coming to us. And when we have made the conscious choice and decision that we want to try to come into unity together and really accept everything about each other, that's the moment we're going to be confronted with and face exactly that which we reject. This is going to be put in our face. Oh, yeah? Oh, yeah? Are you really one with this? Oh, yeah? <laughs> Here it is. Can you be one with it? Can you accept it? Can you allow it? The things that I reject are getting less and less, but there still are some that I personally struggle with. So let's do that as our, as our exercise today, as our meditative exercise. <laughs> um, <clears throat> we're all kind of probably all over the place. So let's just get comfortable, feel your body. Where are you at? How are you positioned? Are you sitting? Are you laying? Wow, you guys are fast. Whew, you guys are already on it. I love you guys. So start feeling those roots as you're breathing in and exhaling and releasing. I'm going to take a quick sip of coffee because I just do come down a little bit. <clears throat> really coming down, back into the self. Laura, that's beautiful. Needing to find beauty in the imperfection. <laughs> so just feeling into the self. Feeling in your body. What parts of your body feel tense? Mm, video issues. I would guess that if you're experiencing video issues right now, there's a part of you that does not want <laughs> to work on these issues. <laughs> There's some part that still feels justified in their passionate expression of rejection. Interesting. I'm showing my feet as strong and constant. So some of you who are <coughs> experiencing struggle right now with receiving the message, just recognize that in some ways, you still feel really justified in your separation from other things and other people. <laughs> and that that's okay. That's okay. That's a part of unityness as well, because we come here as individuations. And so grappling with that is part of the separation wound. Just be grateful that it's being shown to you right now. Don't reject it. Don't try to fight it. Just allow that that's showing you one of your struggles. 
So coming fully into the self, I can feel you guys are already grounded and already connected because you guys know where we're going with this. So let's really come in and open up this space for ourselves to do this work. Imagine that you're in this bubble sphere, which is your singular expression, your singularity, creating this bubble around yourself. And feel how you just suddenly felt cut off from all these other things. Let's just see how you've been released from this. And now you're, I'm in my bubble. Mm, so happy, I'm all in my bubble. Yay, I'm by myself, I'm all here. Now let's open that bubble up a little bit beyond you. And let's see who comes in first. Opening it up and allowing one more person to come into your bubble. Who did you bring into your bubble? Is it somebody that you love, respect, enjoy, appreciate, value? Or was it somebody that you have conflict with, that you reject? You're like, eh, no, I don't want them in my bubble. Damn it, they're in there. Just look at that. We're just going to be in allowance right now. We're not going to do any work. We're going to allow. Just note that. Who was that first person to come into your bubble? <clears throat> not knowing what the intention would be. And observe them. Observe them until you can find something about them that is in common with you. Because we go one of two ways. We either idolize somebody as being better than having all these things that we don't, behaving in a way that we can't, displaying something that we don't know or understand, or we reject somebody. I don't do that. I'm not that way. I never would. I can't. Just talking about this this morning from myself. Just continue to view them until you can start to see commonalities. Something that's common. Even if it's just that you have two eyes and one nose, and one mouth, and two ears, hopefully. Even if it's as simple as that, you both breathe air, consume food, sleep, wake, work. Continue to look at them until you're seeing more and more things that are common and less things that are different. You both love family, your family, even if you express it in a way that may not be what you would express. Just keep looking and observing as though you were a biologist taking notes on these two monkey people in the bubble, yourself and this other person. Now I want you to extend your bubble a little further and let one more person come in. Who is that? Someone you love? Someone you hate? Someone that's eh? Just observe. Call in Amara Omni to come in and support you in healing the parts of yourself that are being witnessed right now, that in any way are out of balance. Call in White Buffalo Woman to support you in feeling that unity with each of these people. 
use their supportive energy, their frequency of allowance, of wholeness. Use these vibrational frequencies in your sphere. Maybe the person that's come in rejects you, but you don't reject them. That too is part of the unity. Continue looking until you see more of what's in common than what's not. <clears throat> this doesn't mean, and I'm not telling you, that you have to bring those people into your actual physical life. But know that they're there regardless. Because they exist in this manifestation. They're in this creation. Extend your bubble a little bit more and bring another person in. Allowance is everything I believe. That's why I struggle to call myself a healer rather than an expander. It's kind of transitioning that into consciousness expander. Because it's really about expanding and allowing all things to be true rather than fixing or healing any one aspect. <clears throat> Somebody's got some throat stuff going on. Maybe you need to yell at one of those people that's in your bubble. And feel your yelling coming back at you. <laughs> Ooh, reverberation. <clears throat> the bubble can handle it. This is your sphere. Continue expanding the sphere out even more until whole communities are within it and you're seeing yourself as one of them, one of many, all one. Thank you. So I'm going to go ahead and let you guys continue this exercise. You know where it's going. Continue it all the way until your sphere is the whole world. Everyone in it. Let White Buffalo Woman help you see the unity. And let Amara Omni help you heal those parts. Heal them in the sense that you allow them to be beautiful. The scars are beautiful. Love you guys. Made me cry too. See you tomorrow. We'll work more on passion.